Conte Crown copy of Caravaggio's Incredulity of Thomas by Jeremiah Ems, emscomputerart.com, January 2015, Anno Domini. After four days of drawing on smooth, dark, cool-toned paper, I began laying in the whites with a Conte Paris white Conte Crown 2456-2B, establishing highlights and blending out to the high mid-tones with a soft, fuzzy brush. After this is complete, I find the dark, hard edges, laying them in with a Conte Paris Sketching Crown Black 2340-09, and blend, blending them out to dark mid-tones with the brush, enhancing the darks throughout the rest of the process as needed. Once the grisaille is complete, I begin adding color with only slight pressure and re-establishing whites as needed. John 20 verses 24 to 31 says, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of, his, print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Caravaggio was a master of drama, and here he depicts the moment the Apostle of Christ, known as Doubting Thomas, is faced with the reality of Christ's resurrection. Thomas was a cynical fellow, which led him to skepticism. His negativity was so great that he wished for death of the apostles, <clears throat> even when, even before Christ was crucified. The crucifixion of Christ probably reinforced his cynicism, assuring him that the challenges faced by the apostles were impossible to overcome. He could not believe the report of the other apostles who had said they had seen the risen Savior. He may have thought that they were either deluded by hope, perhaps mistaking someone else for Christ, or that they may have only been trying to cheer the grieving family and friends of Jesus. Thomas was a doubter because he only relied upon what his senses, senses told him, and only those which reinfor reinforced his darkest thoughts. A ghostly apparition was not going to be enough to awaken Thomas from the living nightmare which was to cast long shadows from the land of death. Caravaggio shows us a hesitant Thomas, at the moment of disbelief, incredulous, with eyes opened in shadow, astonished at what the light has revealed. The tactile experience that Thomas cannot deny conflicts with his, with conflicts with his rational mind, which still holds on to doubt. However, the cynical Thomas receives a profound revelation, his critical mind also reasoning that if Christ has risen from the dead upon his own power, then he must be the one that has the power over death as the creator of life. He declares the divinity of Christ, saying, My Lord and my God, and so from the lips of the man who wished for death, the saving faith which gives everlasting life is spoken. Romans 10, 6-10 but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Hebrews 11.1 1. now, faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. John 2.19-22 Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them. And they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. 
Romans 1.17, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. Romans 3.22-28, Even the righteousness of God, which is, of, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God. Where is boasting, then? It is excluded. By what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Romans 5, one. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 9.30 What shall we say then, that the Gentiles which follow not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? 2 Corinthians 5.7 For we walk by faith, not by sight. Galatians 2.16 Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Galatians 3.11 But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Ephesians 2.8.9 For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 1 John 5, 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Hebrews eleven six. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. 1 Corinthians thirteen twelve. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Job 19, 26-27 And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my, uh, mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. The color palette is Conte et Paris, number two, 28, scarlet orange, and 40, red lead, for the clothing of Thomas. Number 7, red brown, for the clothing of the more distant man, and the mid-tone, shadows of his face. Number 17, raw sienna, for the light side of his face, and a little reddish brown there also. I use raw sienna in the shadow of Christ and Thomas's face, his neck, and ears for the highlights within the shadow. 
to use number 17 yellow ochre for the medium skin tones within the lit section of Christ Flesh and umbers for the more neutral tones and the neutral colors there within the shadow. The red brown on Christ's left arm for the highlights is used within the shadow and on his hair. Naples yellow number 47 is used for the highlight skin tones on Christ's flesh and the highlights on Christ's robe which I reestablish more distinctly with highlights of white. Number 54 raw umber is used for the reflected lights on Christ's robe and the more dark neutral tones of the flesh within the shadows.